here with Nick Brown. He's going to tell us a little bit about insect life on the park. Well, the park has a very wide range of insects, and of course it depends which bit of the park you're in, what you're going to see. If you're around the lakes, and if it's summertime, then it's definitely well worth looking out for damselflies and dragonflies. And of course you mostly find those around the edges of the lake, and sometimes flying right over the water as well, in the, in the middle of the lake. These are insects that spend most of their lives as larvae under the water, and then they, they, they come up onto a vegetation or the bank, they split their larval cases open, and then the adults emerge, they dry off in a few hours, and then they've got really, in some cases, only a few days, in other cases maybe a few weeks to live, to fly around and to mate, and for the females to lay their eggs. So their lives are pretty short, but they're always very spectacular spectacular insects, particularly the dragonflies, which can be three or four inches long, uh, the bigger ones, so they're well worth looking out for. And Kettleston has a good variety, both of damselflies, which are the smaller ones, and dragonflies, which are the bigger ones. Of the dragonflies, the kind of the best time, I suppose, is July and August, because at that time you've got uh, species like the emperor dragonfly, which is a lovely blue and black one, one of the biggest in Britain. And that flies out over the water and makes big sweeps and circles over the water, looking for females. The males are looking for females to mate with. And they're on the wing on a nice warm day and preferably not too windy. You won't, if it's raining, you won't see them at all. So you need some decent weather. But if you come to the lakes at Kettleston on a nice day in high summer, you are almost certainly bound to see some dragonflies. Of course, sometimes they have to hunt for food themselves and they eat smaller insects. They're predatory. And when they feeding themselves they'll come over the edges of the lake and look for little insects that are feeding there and, and will hunt around the margins of the lake particularly if you've got a bit of marsh and a bit of vegetation around the edge and sometimes you can even find them in the middle of the wood because when they first hatch out they go to a sheltered place in which to feed and to get themselves mature before they're ready to come to the lake and get involved with the, the whole territory and mating business so sometimes right in the middle of the wood you'll find species like the the southern hawker and the migrant hawker. Now they're a lovely uh, mix of blues and greens and, and blacks and um, quite big insects. Um, people used to think that they stung you but they don't because they've got very long abdomens or tails. They don't sting, they're completely harmless and they're lovely insects to see. So the summertime is, the uh, middle of the summer is great for the bigger dragonflies. A little bit earlier on in about June time we get the black-tailed skimmer which is a blue dragonfly with a blue abdomen with a little black spot on the end of its tail and those you can see perched around the edges of the lakes. You won't see the emperors perched or the, or the hawkers perched because they tend to be always in the air and when they do perch they hide away in trees. But these black-tailed skimmers you can see around the edges of the lake perched on vegetation or on the bare soil around the edge where they sun themselves and they sit there and then they fly out and if they see another dragonfly and chase it off if it's, uh, if it's another male or follow it if it's another female. And then of course you've got the tiny little damselflies which are much more delicate insects um, but still can be at least an inch and a half from one end to the other and again they're, they're lovely colours. We've got about four or five species in the park and the commonest ones are the, the common blue damselfly and the large red damselfly. Those are the ones you'd like to see. The large red is quite an early one. It's around in May and then the common blue comes out a bit later. And there's the azure blue as well. So they're, they're quite difficult to separate, but never mind identifying them. They're just lovely insects to see. Now these are much more delicate insects, so they will usually be around the margins of the lakes. But if there's a lot of um, weed come up on the, on, the, on the surface of the lake, then you will often see them perching right on that weed. And that's where they do their mating. And the females actually lay their eggs in to the weed under the surface of the water. So that's another very interesting group of insects that you'll find at Kettleston in the summer. Particularly, as I say, if the lakes have got some weed on them, then you will be able to see them sitting out on the lake. So, of course, dragonflies are real summery insects. And the other summery, sunny insects are the butterflies, of course, which also love to come out only in the sunshine. On a wet, dull day, you won't see any, but on a sunny day, with a bit of luck, you should see, as you walk around the park, some of the butterflies that, that we have here at Kettleston. Now, of course, again, it depends on the season which kind of butterfly you're going to see. Some of the early ones, like the orange tip butterfly, is flying in April and into May, but then they aren't seen subsequently. Other butterflies you will find later in the year, so it depends very much on the season uh, and the weather, of course, exactly what you're going to see. But 
the, the glades in the woods are a good place. One of the lovely butterflies, a brown butterfly that you'll see in the glades, is called the speckled wood. And that's a butterfly that actually makes a little territory in a sunny glade and sits there. And when it sees another butterfly, a bit like the dragonflies, it'll fly up and chase it off if it's a male or try and mate with it if it's a female. Um, so you can get quite close to them. And they're lovely little things. You can actually watch them as they sit. And if you s stand and wait for a bit, you can see this territorial display going on and, and the breeding cycle taking place. As well as that, of course, we've got the butterflies that you might get in your garden, things like the small tortoiseshell and the peacock and the Red Admiral. They all hibernate as adults, so they emerge in the early part of the spring, and then they lay their eggs, and then they, the adults, die, and the eggs develop into caterpillars, and the caterpillars pupate, and then the pupa then split open, so you get the next lot of adult butterflies in the middle of the summer. So again, it's very much seasonal, and depending you know, what time of year you come here, what you'll see. And of course, it does depend on the weather. If we get a very wet, miserable summer, a lot of the butterflies will, will, will die, and there won't be so many to see. If we get a lovely hot summer, then we many more around. So the places to look are in the woods, in the glades, on some of the grasslands, particularly where the grass is longer, where the grass has been mown down by the sheep, you won't find any, but in the longer grasses, where there are probably some other plants and uh, flowers that they can get nectar from, that's the kind of place to have a look for butterflies. So again, you know, it's a bit of a, a, a chancy thing, sometimes you can walk around the park and not see very much, particularly if it's a windy day, or you know, certainly a wet and a cold day, you won't see any at all. They are really sun lovers so if the sun's out uh, that's the time, kind of time that you'll you'll see uh, butterflies and uh, if you if you can't identify them but one's sitting there on a piece of leaf take a picture take it home and there are lots of apps that will help you to identify it